everyone, I'm Celine from Blue Cala Patterns and welcome to video two for the Delphinium Hobo Bag. Um, I just want to recap where we left off in the first video. Um, I went ahead and fused the fusible fleece pieces to um, the wrong side of my exterior pieces and the two lining gusset pieces. And like I said, hopefully you can see, there's a little bit of a gap here where I've trimmed the seam allowance uh, from the fleece. So I'm going to set those aside. So here, all these pieces have their fleece now. So setting those aside. And in this video, what we're going to start with is assembling our exterior gusset. So you should have your two exterior gusset pieces. Uh, mine are in cork. Um, if you're using uh, fabric for yours, you'll want to have interface those pieces. Okay, so I'm just going to start by placing these uh, right sides together and I'm just going to clip the shorter edges along one side and then I'll go over to my machine and I'll sew these together. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end and then uh, we're going to, if you're using fabric, you're going to press the seam allowance open. Uh, I'm using cork and I want to press my cork so I'm going to just finger press and top stitch along both sides of the seam uh, with one eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay so the shorter sides of my gusset have been sewn together and I've top stitch along both sides of the seam allowance. I'm not sure if you can see that, it might be a bit blurry. Um, anyways, the top stitching is done. Um, so now I'm going to take the bottom firm interfacing and I'm going to uh, glue it to the center. So I'm just marking my center marks on the, uh, the bottom uh, firm interfacing. So I'm using Peltex, which is a sew-in. So I'm going to be gluing it to the wrong side. Uh, the piece is eight and a half inches. So I just made a mark at four and one quarter inches. So that should be my center. And then I'm going to be gluing it with the center marks aligned with the, uh, the seam here. And I'm just going to make sure that there's half an inch of space along the top and the bottom. I'm using Fabri-Tac to glue the Peltex to the wrong side. Okay, so center marks aligned with the seam and half an inch of space along the, the top and the bottom. And I'm going to set this aside. I'll put something heavy on top and give it a chance to dry. Okay. And now we're going to make the shoulder strap. Now normally I leave the shoulder strap uh, assembly to the last step, but I don't know if you're, maybe if you're like me, I really hate making straps. So this time I decided to just get it out of the way at the very beginning. So you're going to start by, now obviously if you're using fabric, you can, you can do a lot of pressing instead of uh, the way that I'm going to do it. But because I am not using fabric, I'm going to do it a little differently. So I'm going to start by drawing a line down the center along the entire length of the strap piece. I'm trying to, I'm, do, I use, I'm using a white um, pencil just so that you can see the line on the video, I hope. Okay. And then you're going to need your swivels, which I set aside. Here they are. Okay, and you're gonna go in ahead and slip your strap through the swivels. Okay. 
Okay, and then making sure that the strap piece isn't twisted. Okay, should be like this. You're going to bring the shorter ends together. Like so. And then I'm going to go over to the machine, and it's similar to what I did with the gusset. You're just going to sew these together, making sure to backstitch, and then you'll open up that seam allowance and you'll top stitch along both sides of the seam with one eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so I've sewn the uh, the ends of the strap pieces together, and then I opened the seam allowance and I top stitched along both sides. Hopefully, you can see that. Um, now I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually switch over to the machine so that you can see how I sew this together. So if you're using fabric, you would use your iron and you would fold in both halves towards that center line and you would press it along the entire length. So now you have this loop, okay, and you want to fold this in towards that center line, okay, wrong sides together. And if you're using fabric, press it so that you do this along the entire loop. Now, because I'm using cork, and if you're using vinyl, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to actually fold it like this, but you're going to be sewing as you're folding. So I'm going to switch the camera over to my machine so that I can show you um, how I do that. Okay, so when I'm starting to sew a strap like this, um, I tend to start uh, just above uh, the seam where I join the pieces, and I fold in, and I make sure that the, when I'm folding in wrong sides together, I make sure that the seam is aligned here, so that it makes a straight line. Okay, and then I start about an inch above that, um, because when I come around, I want to uh, stitch over this area twice. And then I'm going to keep my needle in the down position and just keep folding and sewing. And then I'm going to do that in, until I get all the way around to the other end. And then um, I'll backstitch and uh, cut my threads. And then I will do exactly the same thing uh, to sew down the other side. So I'll be folding this side in and then I'll be sewing again. Now I here I'm not, I'm probably sewing about um, a quarter inch from that center, center line. That's the seam allowance that I'm using right now. So I've sewn both sides of the strap in towards the center, wrong sides together, and I sewed those um, I sewed those in place. So now you should have a strap loop and your two swivels in the strap. So you want it so that the uh, the raw edges at the center are on the inside, and make sure that the clip part of your swivels are facing the exterior. Now. We're going to take this loop and we're going to flatten it, but we have this seam. So it's personal preference where you want this seam. Um, you can put it in the center so that it ends up being in the center uh, on the bottom side of your strap, or you can uh, place it so that it's fairly close to uh, one of your swivels. Uh, it's, it's up to you, it's personal preference. I'm just going to put mine close to one of my straps and then I'm going to hunt for clips. So we're going to flatten the loop and that those raw edges are going to be hidden inside in the middle. Okay, so I'm going to flatten the loop and I'm going to clip it all the way along both longer sides here. And then we're gonna go back over to the machine and we're going to sew this together and you're going to sew it uh, using a giant rectangle shape. So you, you start, you can start wherever you want, 
um, I usually start by uh, near one of the swivels and I work all the way down here. When I get close to the other swivel, I then rotate and I sew across and I try to get close to this, the, the swivel but make sure that I'll be able to uh, rotate and keep sewing at the other side here, the other corner. So you sew across and then you rotate and you go down the other long edge and then you stop, you rotate, you go across again and then you go, you end up where you started. You just backstitch a little bit and then you trim your threads. The, okay, so I sh I've sewn the shoulder strap together. So now we have a completed strap and um, I don't know if you can see, but I used about one eighth of an inch seam allowance here along the longer sides. And then I tried to sew as close as I could uh, beneath the uh, the swivel here. Um, now, if you want to add rivets to your strap, this would be the time to do that. Um, I usually add two uh, just underneath uh, uh, the stitching uh, beneath the swivel. Um, so that's optional. If you want to add rivets, you can do that now. And then you can set aside your strap. We're not going to need it until the bag is uh, completely assembled. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to sew up the two exterior zipper pockets. So we're going to we're going to sew up this side of our bag here. So for that you're going to need your faux piping piece, you're going to need your main body exterior piece and you're going to need to your um, exterior slip pocket, uh, the exterior piece and the lining piece. So we're going to start by taking the faux piping piece and you're just going to fold it in half, wrong sides together along the entire length. And then you're going to go over to your machine and just do a quick basting stitch so that uh, it stays folded in half. Now I'm only going to uh, baste it in place along these raw edges. If you want to add some top stitching to the folded edge, you can go ahead and do that, but um, I'm gonna leave mine um, without any stitching. Okay, so I'm gonna finish clipping this and then I'll go over to the machine and just quickly baste uh, the raw edges together along the entire length so that it stays folded in half. Okay, so quickly basted the raw edges together along the entire length so it stays folded in half. Now we're going to clip it along the top curved edge of the exterior slip pocket piece. Now if you're using cork like I am, it's a little bit tougher to get it to curve around the edge because um, uh, you can't really, I like real piping, it's not cut on the bias. Okay, and then you're going to go back to the machine and you're going to baste it in place along the top edge of your slip pocket. Okay, so the faux piping piece is now basted to the top edge of the slip pocket piece. And just going to take the lining piece for the exterior slip pocket and going to line that up. Make sure that they're all lined up here at the top corners. And we're going to clip these together and then go over to the machine and sew them together. Okay, and when you're sewing here, you're sewing with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so the, um, the three layers are sewn together your exterior slip pocket piece, your faux piping, and your uh, exterior slip pocket lining. Now before we flip these over, you should really um, notch the seam allowance because otherwise, uh, because of the curve, it might not sit nicely if you don't do this. Now make sure that you don't cut any of your stitching, okay? No, I'm not going to make you watch me do this the entire way. I'm going to pause the video. I'll finish this. And then what we're going to do is you're just going to flip the slip pocket pieces 
so that they are wrong sides together and then you're going to press the seam allowance along that top edge. Okay, so I'm just going to show you inside. I notched the entire seam allowance, hopefully you can see that. And then I flipped the pieces so that they are wrong sides together. Now, it can be a little bit tricky to pull out your piping and press this top edge. So what I do is I start by lining up the edges, the curved bottom edges. So once that's lined up, I start pressing upwards. And then I just carefully, don't burn your fingers, but carefully tug on the piping and press the entire way. So you want to make sure that your piping is out all the way and then press all along the edge and flip it over and do the same from the lining side. So now you're just going to go over to your machine and you're going to top stitch. Just um, You don't want to top stitch the piping. You're, you're top stitching the exterior slip pocket piece about one eighth of an inch from the top edge here. Okay, so we're going to do the top stitching. Okay, the slip pocket piece is all done with the top stitching. You'll probably see the top stitching a little bit better if we look from the lining side. Now you're going to take the main body exterior piece and we're going to attach the pocket to this piece. So again, you're just lining up the curved edges along the bottom, okay? And then clip this in place. If this, the excess bothers you, you can trim it, but I usually wait until after this step before, uh, before doing the, any trimming of my faux piping. Okay, so I'm just clipping all these layers together. Then I'm gonna go over to the machine and start above the faux piping to make sure that you're basting the entire thing. So go, just follow all the way around the edge with about one quarter inch seam allowance and baste that pocket piece in place. Okay, so now the slip pocket piece is basted. If you turn it around, you can see my basting stitches a little bit more clearly. Now I'm going to trim the excess faux piping. Okay. And we're going to divide this pocket into two separate slip pockets. So you're going to fold it in half, wrong sides together. Okay, and then you're just going to make a mark with a fabric pen along the bottom and the top edge here of your slip pocket. And of course, ah, there it is. Okay, now I've made my marks on the top and the bottom edges of the center of the pocket. I'm gonna go over to my machine and I'm going to sew from the bottom mark and I'm go, gonna sew directly up to the top mark. Make sure at the top here that you backstitch properly so that your pocket openings don't come undone. If you want, you can also add some rivets to reinforce it. I'll show you how I did that here. So it's just an, an extra, uh, an, a way, an, an additional way of reinforcing the opening of the pockets to make sure that it doesn't come undone. Okay, so we're gonna sew and separate this into two slip pockets and then if you wish, you can add uh, some rivets, and, but that's optional. You, if you're, as long as you do a good job backstitching, it should be fine. Okay, so I now have two separate slip pockets and I did go ahead and add some rivets to mine. Um, we're going to stop this video here and in the second part of the exterior assembly we're going to assemble the other side of our bag um, that has the two zipper pockets and then we're going to attach our um, exterior gusset to our two exterior panels.